Hello all, I'm Faisal Kader. I'm a specialist SE in the sales team that manages this account. I specialize in OpenShift and related Red Hat technologies. I'm Kubernetes and OpenShift certified. I closely work with Lance Preston, the infrastructure architect from BOKF in setting up the different OpenShift clusters until production environment. On these clusters, IBM Cloud Pack for automation with its FileNet product is hosted. I closely work with him, help him help, helping him navigate through all the challenges with the infrastructure and provided the necessary enablement to help him complete this effort. Working together, we managed to tackle all the roadblocks and have led to this great success story for the bank and Red Hat. I'll hand it over to Lance to share his experience. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Lance Preston. I am a an infrastructure architect with the BOK Financial Corporation, uh, which is headquartered in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, I'm here today to talk about um, banking app modernization uh, via the IBM Cloud Pack for Automation on the OpenShift container platform. Um, so we started our uh, app modernization journey basically in the fall of 2019. Uh, when we began planning to replace our legacy FileNet platform. Um, and I, I believe I'm sharing that information on the screen now. Um, so our, uh, I'll talk about what our legacy platform looks like here in just a minute. But uh, basically at that time, what we needed was a solution that was going to be supported uh, for the foreseeable future, uh, as well as being uh, more, uh, easily scalable and that could support the needs of our business, uh, which included adding some additional products within that content management uh, uh, platform uh, provided by IBM. Um, so in the fall of 2019 is when we really began talking seriously with uh, IBM and Red Hat about uh, building out a new environment uh, for our content management platform. Um, and it was at that time that they suggested that um, instead of using the, uh, you know, just upgrading the components in our legacy platform, uh, that we look at going with uh, containers and Kubernetes and specifically uh, the OpenShift platform. Um, so um, I'll talk a little bit about uh, what our, our legacy environment looked like. Uh, so, um, we basically had uh, the, the IBM FileNet P8 platform, which was uh, version 5.2. Uh, we were running the IBM Content Navigator uh, kind of separately as a front end to FileNet for our users to access the, the documents and the content within FileNet. Uh, this was all running within the WebSphere uh, Application Server Network Deployment Edition, uh, version uh, 7.0 and 8.5. Uh, we had a combination of both. Um, and these were connecting to an Oracle database uh, that was clustered within Power HA. Uh, all of these uh, were running on our uh, our IBM Power 8 hardware, uh, running the AIX 7.2 operating system. So I will um, kind of show you what that looked like from a, a visual perspective here. Um, and I'm not sure if I can get that any larger. There we go. So um, basically, uh, so all of these are AIX LPARs in our IBM Power Platform, right? Our Oracle database that the uh, these LPARs, which are the uh, content platform engine, uh, which is where the, the, the majority of the content is served up, right? Uh, and it is stored on our uh, network attached storage platform uh, on site. This is all on premise, by the way. Um, and then the content navigator applications, uh, which were load balanced and would front end the content uh, platform engine applications. We also have uh, kind of a legacy piece that's called the application engine, which is used by a couple of other lines of business. So all of these are, so the, the AE servers, the application engines were running WebSphere Network Deployment Edition version 7.0, uh, the CPE servers were WebSphere NT85, 
um, and the content navigator was also WebSphere NB85. Uh, these, these are all separate AIX LPARs in our on-prem Power8 environment. Um, so growing this and expanding this, right, is, is a little bit of a chore. We can obviously add additional resources to each of these servers as needed, but if we need to stand up another server, right, to scale out the environment, um, that, that's obviously a lot of work. We have to build another AIX LPAR. We have to install WebSphere. We have to uh, join that into the existing cluster. Um, and, and get the applications deployed to that. So um, the solution that we came up with uh, with IBM and Red Hat was to deploy uh, what we consider our modern environment, right? Which is the uh, basically the IBM Cloud Pack for automation, right? So we are currently at uh, release 20.0.3 fixed pack two for the, the Cloud Pack for Automation platform. Um, that is running in an Red Hat OpenShift uh, 4.6 environment um, uh, on our on-prem VMware uh, vSphere 7 uh, platform, right? So these, all of our Red Hat OpenShift nodes are just essentially uh, Red Hat Linux core OS VMs running in our on-prem VMware platform. Um, we have the IBM Cloud Pack for Automation deployed to that environment. Uh, we are still running the uh, the Content Platform Engine, which is the IBM FileNet P8 product, but it is the the a later version, right? It's version 5.5. It also is still front-ended by the uh, IBM Content Navigator, which they refer to as the uh, the BAN application within the Cloud Pack for Automation. Uh, but these are now running WebSphere Liberty uh, within the containers uh, within this application. So uh, here's kind of a, a visual of what that looks like. Uh, well, and we all are so we all of these environments are still connecting to an Oracle database on-prem that still resides in our uh, AIX platform in the the IBM Power8 hardware. So this now looks like this essentially. So we have our, our on-prem VMware cluster, which is a, you know, a couple of dozen servers, at least, in our production environment. And those VMs are our Red Hat Core OS nodes. So we've got the three master nodes. Uh, we currently have four worker nodes that are all running uh, Red Hat 4.6.16, I believe is the, the version we're currently at. Um, these are all on you know, on-prem VM data stores in our VMware environment on our enterprise SAN. Um, we have a management node that um, is used to deploy the applications, right? That's where we run the, the OC or the kube control, you know, uh, command line interface for the cluster. Uh, we do also use the, the OpenShift GUI uh, for management of that cluster from time to time, but a lot of the, the tasks that we do, we do command line through this management node. Um, this all is still front-ended through our on-premise uh, load balancer appliances. Um, and then all of the Cloud Pack for Automation applications, those containers and pods, right, they reside within this cluster, right? They run on various nodes within this cluster. Um, and then the persistent storage for those applications, as well as our content within the FileNet platform, is still on our NAS platform, right? Our network attached storage. Um, and then those environments still connect to our on-prem Oracle database uh, instances, which are clustered together in a uh, Power HA environment uh, in running on our AIX 7.2 platform. And again, this is all on-premise. Um, so it, it took us quite a while to actually get to this point, to get this environment stood up. Uh, there was a, a pretty steep learning curve from our perspective to be able to get this environment in place. Uh, but we did receive a lot of help from both Red Hat and from IBM. Uh, Red Hat specifically on getting uh, the OpenShift cluster stood up and working uh, and any problems we had with that. And then, of course, IBM with the Cloud Pack for Automation packages that we got deployed. Um, we struggled with it a little bit, but we were able to overcome any, any issues or difficulties that we had with assistance from, from both of uh, Red Hat and IBM um, and have a 
a test dev cluster stood up as well as a production and a disaster recovery cluster stood up. Um, this image is depicting our production cluster. Um, but now that we have this in place and now that it's stood up, right, um, scaling out these applications is much easier, right? We can just scale up the deployment and immediately have additional instances of the application that are serving our customers. Uh, as well as uh, upgrading the cluster itself is relatively straightforward. It's a, a very simple process. And then upgrading the cloud pack for automation uh, packages themselves, that bundle, uh, it's a much easier process um, than the legacy platform, right? When we used to have to do a, an upgrade for FileNet or for Content Navigator, right? That was pretty much uh, an entire weekend, right? Several employees, uh, working together for the majority of a weekend, uh, which is when we could take the downtime for the application to have it offline for hours or half a day at a time in order to do the upgrades and test it out and make sure everything was working before we went back into production, you know, Monday morning. Now that upgrade process, right, can occur basically within uh, a couple of hours at most, generally less than an hour, um, and it can be done with the applications online, right? We just deploy the new application, uh, apply a new uh, configuration file, right? A YAML file, and the upgrade kind of happens by itself in the background um, with the, the old version of the application still available uh, until the new application is fully deployed and those containers come online and it's just like flipping a switch. And then backing it back out is just as simple. Right, um, so much easier in the new environment um, than the legacy platform. Um, I can't really speak to the performance of the new environment yet. Uh, while we do have this production environment built out, we are still in the process of loading content and data to the FileNet platform to serve to our customers. So they currently are still using the legacy platform, uh, but as we migrate that content to the new platform and make that available, uh, more users will eventually cut over to this new platform, and we will have a much better idea at that point of, um, you know, load and uh, the performance that the new environment can provide. We're optimistic. We don't have any reason to believe that the new environment won't perform as well as, if not better, than the, the legacy platform, uh, but we have uh, yet to, to have any concrete data on that. Um, that's basically what I wanted to present to you. So um, thank you for your time. Uh, uh, I, I appreciate you paying attention. I hope you find this information useful. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Lance, for sharing this wonderful insight on this topic. And thank you all for listening. Lance, myself, and my associates are available to take any questions in the chat.